Peter in Canton, Ohio, what was Gordon Soley's issue with Angelo Poffo? I've always heard that Poffo going into the WCW Hall of Fame is what caused Soley to quit the company. Yes, uh, that was a very, I mean, that was at least a very big part of why he left. Gordon Soley took the Hall of Fame stuff very seriously. And he was actually the head of the committee who chose which people would be inducted into the WCW Hall of Fame. So basically what happened is WWE started its own Hall of Fame in 1993. They only put one person in. It was Andre the Giant. WCW then started one of their own right after that, that same year. They started their own Hall of Fame. And the Slamboree pay-per-view would be where they would honor the legends every year. They would bring out the latest Hall of Fame inductees. You know, today, WWE pays, I think, $5,000, or at least at one time they did. I think they pay you five k if you're an inductee as an appearance fee. Back then, WCW paid their inductees 150 bucks and gave them a plaque. And they also inducted people who may never have worked for WCW at all or the NWA because they wanted it to be like a real Hall of Fame. Soli did not want Angelo Poffo in the Hall of Fame. He did not like the fact that Randy Savage was politicking to get his father into the Hall of Fame. Uh, as if politics were something new to pro wrestling. I mean, give me a fucking break. The, the, the entire business is built on politics. Some people think that Soli was also against it because... Uh, Randy's father ran ICW. ICW back in the day was considered a renegade promotion to the NWA for many years. But when they inducted Poffo in 95, uh, they also inducted Big John Studd, who had just passed away a couple of months before this. And Soli was even more against John Studd going in than he was Angelo Poffo. Uh, there had been a television special that aired a few weeks before the Hall of Fame. Uh, completely unrelated, but it was about premature deaths in wrestling. And this was in 1995, so I can see some things never change. It only got worse. But in that special, they interviewed John Studd's doctor, who flat out said that steroids are what led to his death. And Soli didn't think that it would look good to induct somebody who had just died from steroids. Or I guess he's suggesting the cancer he passed away from was caused by all the steroids he took, because I think Stud was battling two different cancers when, when he uh, passed away, including Hodgkin's lymphoma. So Gordon didn't think he deserved to be in the Hall of Fame either. I'm sure if Gordon had a vote in the Baseball Hall of Fame, there's no way he ever would have voted for Barry Bonds or Roger Clemens or any of those people either. So they went over his head, and they inducted both of them anyway. They were both part of the Hall of Fame class. And if you watch the Slamboree 95 show back on Peacock, you know, Gordon's the MC. He's on stage. He's introducing them one by one. He had to stand on stage and induct both of these guys and just bite his tongue. So they inducted Gordon that same year, too, I guess, to try to make him happy. But it didn't stop him from quitting after the show. And once he was gone, Bischoff discontinued the Hall of Fame. WWE had its final Hall of Fame class the following year until 2004 when they brought it back. And one of the inductees that year... Big John Stud. Uh, we'll end with this. Mark from Massachusetts. Are you aware if there was any business arrangement with the WWE and FMW in 1997 or 98? I've watched a handful of shows from this time and I saw Vader work a cage match with Ken Shamrock for FMW. Mick Foley did a six-man tag and Shawn Michaels made an appearance as a referee. Do you have any background on this? I don't have too many details about it, but they clearly they had a working agreement of some sort. Uh, Onita even flew over. He met with Vince McMahon at Titan Tower. Uh, there's video of the two of them shaking hands. Onita wanted to bring an exploding barbed wire death match to the States. And WWE was considering something similar for WrestleMania 14. They were going to have some kind of a, a match like that with Mick Foley and Terry Funk. And it was going to be held on Funk's Double Cross Ranch down in Texas. And then plans changed, they got cold feet, and they never they never did it. We ended up with fucking Chainsaw Charlie at WrestleMania that year. Uh, Shawn Michaels was a referee for the Hayabusa main event on the 10th anniversary FMW show in 99. I couldn't remember what show it was. I looked it up. It was the 10th anniversary show. Um, but that was part of the relationship there. He worked that as the referee. And if I remember, I think they made some kind of deal after this. Uh, Sean did. I think it was completely independent of the WWF, where he would send some of his students 
uh, to work FMW shows from his Texas Wrestling Academy, including, by the way, a young American dragon. That was Brian Danielson's first Japanese tour. He was still a rookie. 